Hey, so if you've seen some of my previous episodes, you should immediately notice a big difference. I'm speaking English. This is not something that I'm thinking about changing or doing exclusively in the future and changing over to completely, but the idea is to try an English video every now and then and shuffle them in with the Icelandic ones. Um, what I will do is that when I post English videos, I'll have Icelandic subtitles. When I do Icelandic videos, I'll try to post English subtitles so that I at least cross the demographic. Why am I doing this? It really started when I started looking around. I was just seeing if there were other people in Iceland doing video blogs, doing these kind of things. Um, most of the things I found when I started Googling and searching for Iceland videos, that kind of stuff, was visitors to Iceland, foreigners, posting travel-related information with facts about Iceland, with tips on how to travel here. Uh, many of these are actually good videos, very good videos. But I think they sometimes get a fact wrong here and there, and they sometimes lack the local perspective. Now, there obviously were some local ones, but they seem to mostly originate from things like the local travel board. And as such, they obviously are a bit biased. They have an agenda, although they're good videos and oftentimes have very good information in them. So my idea is to make this the first video in hopefully what will become a series of videos about Iceland, about traveling to Iceland, visiting Iceland, things to do, things not to do, and so on and so forth. So, without further ado, this is my first video. Top 5 facts about Iceland that are complete bullshit. So for my first fact, I'm actually located here in Hetlisgeri, which is a small park in the town of Hapnafjörður on the southern outskirts of the capital region. And it's a fitting location because this town actually has a lot to answer for when it comes to the propagation of this fact. The fact is the claim that everybody in Iceland believes in elves. This of course is absolutely bonkers. I don't think I know any person who believes in I don't think I know any sane person who believes in elves. Truly. This is a myth. This is a part of our mythology, our folklore. Uh, somebody who actually claims that Icelanders believe in elves is well, either kind of cuckoo or trying to sell you souvenirs. This is no more true than believing that every Irishman thinks there are leprechauns walking around or that every American actually thinks that Elvis is still walking the earth. Icelanders don't believe in elves. Okay? I thought it was gonna stop raining, but it doesn't seem to want to do that. So I'm hiding out under some trees, some of the few ones you'll find in Iceland. I'm actually in another park now called Elliðardalur in the eastern part of, of Reykjavík. Uh, behind me you'll see uh, a museum of power production. And power production is what I wanted to mention in my next point. Uh, it seems to be a very widespread misunderstanding that Iceland produces all of its energy geothermically. This is something we see in the global media. I saw this in a recent vlog from Nas Daily, the well, relatively famous vlogger who was here recently. Um, yeah, people seem to generally think that Iceland produces its electricity geothermically. This is not true. We mainly do so by way of hydroelectric power plants. I think over 73% of our energy production comes from hydroelectric, which means we are not using geothermic sources, we are actually damming rivers in the highlands, creating big reservoirs uh, to feed into the turbines. We do have some geothermic ones, so that may contribute to the misunderstanding, 
Also, a significant part of Iceland uses geothermic water to actually heat homes and houses, so that might also be a contributing factor. So again, when it comes to the production of electricity, we mainly use hydroelectric sources. For my part, they're not as nice as solar and wind, because they actually, although they don't release any greenhouse gases, they actually leave pretty big scars on the wilderness and the highlands. There you have it. We're not geothermic. So, just sitting in the car, here's actually a fact that probably, probably started from somebody in Iceland making a joke to somebody they knew abroad. And it's something that's been circling around online for quite some while now. I'm going to show you something on the phone in a moment. Um, I've certainly heard this quite a few times. I've gotten this question from colleagues abroad, from people I've met on my travels. And the question really is, do Icelanders really have an app for hooking up and making sure you're not meeting your relatives? Let me show you. What we have, and this is the source of the rumor, what we have is this particular app here called Islandinga Book. Called Islandinga Book. I hope the screen didn't turn off again. Uh, it's named in reference to one of the Icelandic sagas, and it means the Book of the Icelanders. This is an app released by an Icelandic company, a genome research company called Decode Genetics. And it's basically the result of extensive genetic research that they've been doing into Icelanders and Icelandic ancestry. So it's an ancestry database it, for ancestry for um, for this is a this is a difficult word for me for ancestry aficionados. Um, I guess somebody could, to an extent, try to use it to compare potential partners, but I think that would be extremely creepy to do when you meet people for the first time. So. Um, Probably a funny joke originally, but sadly, not true. We do not have a genetically based hookup app. And now to a topic that's close to my heart and stomach, Icelandic food. It's a well-known fact that Icelanders enjoy a rich heritage of traditional foods. We have these tasty culinary treats like uh, fermented shark that you may have heard about, that we traditionally wash down with a shot of Icelandic schnapps called brennivin. We have seared sheep heads and head cheese made from the same. And of course, la not last but not least, the, uh, the delicious pickled ram testicles. Definitely things that every Icelander loves and eats as often as they, poss as they possibly can. Excuse me, sir. Uh, do you have anything simple, like soup? No, this is obviously not true. Uh, and unless you're actually traveling here in the Old Norse month of Thorri, which is in January, February, it might even be difficult to you, for you to, to find these things. I mean, they do still exist and they come from a, from a time where people actually had to eat everything to, or anything to stay alive. Um, in, in the month of Thorri, you will see these things popping up again uh, as they are served and eaten, enjoyed at these midwinter feasts called Thorraplot. But people generally don't, don't like this stuff anymore. I mean, there are people that actually do. Um, I think they mostly come from a generation that now suffers from dementia, or they actually do it out of some sort of misplaced feeling of, of patriotic loyalty that they need to actually do these things. Uh, but it's something that is more of a sport, done on a dare, something that we tell tourists that they have to try. But we certainly don't enjoy this stuff, generally speaking. I wouldn't enjoy this any more than, than you would. So, this is not something we generally eat. Fifth untrue fact about Iceland. I'm gonna make this a quick one because I'm running out of daylight here. Um, this is a rumor that I've seen online quite a few times. It seems to have popped up a few years ago. I think it originated in some nations in, in Africa and has been circling around that part of the, of the globe and, and wider actually. Um, and the claim is that Iceland is suffering from a deficit of, of males, of men, 
and that the Icelandic government, as a result, is paying foreign men to come in and marry Icelandic women. This is not true. Uh, I think we, well, the argument might be made that we suffer from a deficit of masculinity, but I actually think the males outnumber the females in Iceland. So, uh, sorry guys, you're just gonna have to try like everybody else. So, those were my five untrue facts, myths, misconceptions about Iceland. Um, if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you're in a bad mood and didn't, go ahead and hit the, uh, the dislike. If you'd like to see more of these things, you subscribe. It really helps. If you have any ideas, questions, comments, things you would like to see covered, use the commenting section below. Until then.